Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is episode 11 of our custom pizza truck build and we just got the oven in, but it came with a couple of problems. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, the first thing that might seem a little bit out of place is the giant table that it is attached to because I spent all that time making this table. So I called up the owners to figure out why it was shipped with a table and they have no idea. They thought that they ordered it without a table. I thought that they ordered it without a table. So nobody knows what's going on. The problem with there being a table attached to it is that you can see it is bolted and then welded to these four legs. So what it is looking like I will have to do is remove the bolts, cut the welds, lift up the table with the forklift and then set it down on the table that I made. The problem with that is that how am I going to get the forks out once it's sitting down on the table? So there is no outside anchor on this because of course it was built on the table at the factory. The ones that are made for trailers or to sit on your own table usually have some anchor points and then they come with four nuts on the bottom that you can put a couple of bolts through your own table to mount it. That is not going to work for this. So the current plan is to, once it is lifted over here with the forklift, I will then put it on a couple of spacers so that I can then pull the forks out and it will be sitting on spacers. I am probably going to have to drill a couple of holes in this table right here so that I can get a bottle jack underneath to lift it up from the supports that are on the bottom of the oven and then move out the spacers. Once the spacers are moved out, bottle jack can go down and the table will be sitting nice and flush on top of this. So that's the idea. I'm not 100% sure that it is going to work. It may take some finagling to try and figure out this situation, but we will get that oven on this table. But before I can do any of that, I want to paint this table. Before I can paint it, I do want to make a little mount here for the cords of wood, and I will be doing that with this, the half inch square tubing that in a previous episode I went ahead and rolled out to this diameter. So first things first, I'll have to cut this steel, make the wood mount, paint the table, get the oven on the table, get the table in the truck. Let's get to it. All right guys, well our wood holder came out fantastic. The next step for this table is going to be painting it, but unfortunately I will have to wait for the weather to cooperate later this week because it is very windy at the moment. On the pizza truck over here, the next step is going to be completing our back wall. I will be doing that with a bunch of panels. You see I have the first one just sitting up there and then I've got all the other ones right here. These were done by a local company called Inked Wraps. They actually have a YouTube channel that is just getting started that I highly recommend. They have a video on a GT500 getting wrapped that is very cool. For the graphics on this, we went very subtle. You see the background is a matte black finish with gloss black decals. It's a little bit hard to tell until these are actually installed up there with the light shining on them, but it will be very cool. Now, as far as installation goes, I will be using 3M mounting tape. This is their extreme 30 pound mounting tape along with 100% silicone sealant. Now, basically the 3M tape is really just to hold them flush up against the wall so that the silicone can dry. Once that silicone is dry, it will be very sturdy and weatherproof. So let's get started.
All right, guys, well, the back wall came out fantastic. The next step is going to be getting these windows installed, and wouldn't you know it, I got my glass delivery this morning. Now, these are made by Milgard. They are 1 8 inch thick, dual pane, tempered glass with a solar shield, and the installation should be very simple. You see you've got these nice little mounting tabs, so I'll be able to use some self-tapping sheet metal screws. I will do a bead of silicone around the inside here just to make sure that it is weather tight, and if you can tell right here, I've already cut a nice little indent for the latches on our vent windows. So let's get to it. All right, guys, well, the glass came out absolutely amazing. So we will be moving on back to the oven table, which is now sitting on the old oven pallet. And wouldn't you know, the weather is certainly cooperating with us today. It is an absolutely gorgeous day outside. So I'll get the old forklift fired up. We'll get this oven table outside and get it painted. All right guys, well the new sink arrived and this is not actually the first sink that we ordered. If you remember in a previous episode, I showed you guys the fresh water tank and the wastewater tank along with the water heater that I was planning on using. Those were for a different sink that ended up actually being back ordered. So we were able to get our hands on this one, which ended up being a huge blessing because this has, you see, three sinks right here and then a partition and a hand washing sink. It's only 60 inches by 20 inches and it is designed for a food truck because it has everything built in. So we have a wastewater tank, we have a fresh water tank, we have a water heater, and then we also have the pump. So the only thing we'll have to do to mount this sink is remove the wheels that are on the bottom and replace them with brackets so that it can mount firmly to the vehicle and then plug it in. Now, as far as the electrical goes, I didn't actually show you wiring up the entire vehicle because, well, it's quite boring on camera, but it is complete. So let me show you how it's looking. Starting off in this corner where the sink goes, you see we have two separate GFCI protected circuits. Now, the reason I have to run two separate circuits is because the water heater actually takes about 13 amps on that sink, and that is more than everything else combined. We have a fridge going under the oven, we have a fridge built into the prep service table, and then we have this giant fridge, and then we have this lighting, and and then we have running all of the devices, you know, for selling the pizzas. Everything combined is like 11 amps and then the water heater on that sink is like 13. So this is a 15 amp and this is another 15 amp. This one is just the water heater and then this one is everything else. So it goes from here, daisy chained to this outlet, which is going to be for the fridge that is under the pizza oven and then it runs underneath
underneath here and goes to this outlet right here and this has a USB-A and a USB-C port so that you can go ahead and charge up any devices that you have while you're in our little service area here. Now on the underside of the vehicle it also runs on that same circuit to that outlet right there which is going to be for this fridge. Let me show you what it's looking like on the outside of the vehicle. Now all of that wiring runs right here to a sub panel that has two circuits. One is labeled water heater and one is labeled everything else. Now this is powered from this, a 30 amp RV style plug that is currently hooked up to an adapter and an extension cord. Now the reason that this is not hardwired to the generator is because uh, the previous truck that I built had a few issues with the generator and that was a huge problem when they were stuck out at events where they didn't have shore power. So the plan here, keep it on a 30 amp plug which is standard for just about every generator and then if there's ever a failure of this generator you can just bring an extra generator out to the site and then plug this in. Now I did make this plug short enough so that as you're driving down the road if some employee forgets to leave it plugged into the generator and it becomes unplugged it's not going to hit the ground and damage that plug. I think that this is a great design for just a simplicity and for ease of swapping out generators because these things don't last forever. All right moving back into the truck. All right, now I don't have enough time in this episode to show you guys fully mounting the sink, the prep service table, or the fridge. That's gonna be in a future episode along with installing the oven. But I wanted to show you guys how the latch system is working and how the vents work on the windows because I didn't show you that in the time lapse. So here's how they're looking. All right, now I remember telling you I was going to install latches, but I don't think I ever actually showed you which ones I went with. These are aviation style latches that have a detent at 90 degrees, so it'll hold it up and it'll hold it this way. I saw these holding in the tray table when I was on my last flight a couple of months ago, and I thought that that would be a great idea for this truck. So I installed these so you can simply flip it up 90 degrees, and then now you've got a handle, so you just push it out like this, and then when you need to close it, you just pull it back and then flip the latch. Now again, these lift struts do hold it in the closed position, so these these are just kind of secondary. They also help obviously for theft prevention. So flip it up, open it up. Same thing with this one, flip it, open it up. And then the last window here. And let me show you how it looks from the outside. Ah, very cool. And then closing them is just as simple. Let me show you. Just go, bink. Bink. And then, bink. Good to go. All right, guys, that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for making it this far. We are so close to the finish line on this build. There are only a few episodes left, and then after that, I get to drive this 1,300 miles back across the country, this time to Chicago, where I will then deliver it to the new owners, and they said they will let me fire up the pizza oven and make a few pies on it. So it will be very cool to see this in action. So until next week, take care. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye. Hey! Oh, look at that.